keto at Costco. Might be a little difficult to do on a budget, but if we expand everything as if we're shopping for maybe three weeks or a month, I think we can still classify it as keto on a budget. So here's the thing, when I walk into this Costco, I don't really know what they have. Each Costco has different roadshow items, they have different organic options, different keto options. The cool thing is, is I'm gonna show you what's available at this particular Costco, which chances are is available at your Costco, but I'm also gonna break down just things as I go. That's the cool thing, is you're gonna be learning with me. So if I don't know a specific item that's there, I'm gonna look at the label, I'm gonna learn about it, I'm gonna see if it's keto friendly. We're gonna have a lot of fun, we're gonna be able to do this together, and you're gonna get not only a shopping experience, but you're gonna get sort of a shopping education. So hopefully we don't get kicked out of Costco. We have a bad habit of getting kicked out of grocery stores whenever we're doing these helpful videos. So let's go ahead and let's head on into Costco, and let's do a keto Costco grocery haul, kind of on a budget. Ah, that sounds good. <laughs> All right, so not super familiar with this Costco, but we'll go ahead and we're gonna go down the aisles individually. And then what we'll do is after that, we'll come back and we'll hit this little front section where a lot of times they have sometimes the options that quite honestly are the healthiest. Uh, they'll have like the nuts, actually literally like right there. Um, so we'll hit those afterwards so we can kind of hit the main aisles first. Now I might recommend if you are on a budget that you actually start with like your meat sources first. Um, I'm not going to worry about it on this run, but that way you can keep yourself a little bit, I don't know, just in the parameters that you need to be in. Uh, for example, if you if you know the meat's gonna be the most expensive portion of what you're overall getting, I highly recommend getting that first because that's kind of your staple. That way your budget can build around the rest of that. Um, since I'm just kind of doing a walkthrough, I'm not as worried about it, but it's just a hot tip for you. All right, let's see what they got here. Okay, so beef jerky is tricky, right? People think it's gonna automatically be keto. Here's the hard part eight grams of sugar in a serving there. Okay, so we've got you just one package of this, 90 calories, but 10 grams of carbs. So that's not gonna really work well on keto, unfortunately. Let's see what else they've got. Yeah, so you're still, it's just tons of carbs, 10 grams of sugar, that makes it really tough. The other thing that, well, actually I appreciate this. So even though this has, uh, has wheat-free soy sauce, which is great, see people are, catching on with the whole gluten-free thing. They know that gluten triggers different prolamin reactions within the body, whether you have a celiac issue or not. Um, what about these guys? Six grams, a little bit better. Cane sugar. Yeah, you might be just out of luck on the beef jerky here. You know, if you're in a pinch, it would be okay. But the thing is, is that, actually this one's not bad. Still gluten-free. So the Kirkland Signature ones actually seem to be the best. One ounce, you can have four grams of sugar. I'll go ahead and I'll get it. Uh, again, something I would probably never have more than one ounce. What about the turkey jerky? No go on that. Jerky, you like the jerky. What I don't want to do is blow my budget on snacks. So Costco, that's the thing you have to worry about. It's really easy to blow your budget on snacks. Like you don't realize like, okay, there, we just spent 10 bucks on beef jerky. Like, was it really needed? No, but it might give me some snacks throughout the course of the month, right? Um, I also feel like spending $16 on single serving nuts, unless you really need them on the go, I don't know if that's gonna be the best bet. Plus, peanuts and cashews. Peanuts are a legume, we don't really want those. Cashews, technically not even a nut, they're actually a fruit. They're also the highest carb nut. And we have almonds, which although are okay, really not that great. I prefer macadamias or almond, or excuse me, walnuts, or possibly even pecans. That whole side of the aisle is just a no-go. <laughs> Oh, a lot of this stuff, by the way, is very deceiving. So you see like almond crunch, you're like, oh cool, it's just almonds. But then you turn around and you look at the carbs, they add seven grams of sugar to it. Dry roasted almonds, brown rice syrup, cane sugar. A lot of things in Costco you gotta be careful of, but there's also a lot of hidden gems. Uh, let's see what we got here. This is kind of the process style, which probably isn't stuff we want, but well, this is cool. This is... Instant bone broth. Beef bone broth powder. Beef collagen, baker's yeast, tomato powder, chicory root fiber, apples. That's interesting. I've actually never seen that before. Hmm. Okay, so this is a cool product. I wouldn't really just call it an essential item for me though. Again, that price, like, I mean, I guess if you're doing a lot of intermittent fasting, this could be cool. But 460 milligrams of sodium, I don't know. I'm on it. 
I'll see where I'm going to be at with budget with this. I think I'm going to put it back for now just because I don't know if I trust that that's going to be really high quality stuff. Actually, that price on chia seeds is actually pretty good. So with chia seeds, you're mainly looking at a soluble fiber. So the cool thing about soluble fiber is one gram is going to hold a lot of water. So that means that you have less potential risk of the fiber kicking you out of keto because you need a lot less to get by. So that's what I use chia seed for. I'll use chia or I'll use psyllium. Grind it up or honestly just make chia pudding, something like that, make it really easy. So don't get thrown off too much by the carbs. Okay, we got dietary fiber five grams, which technically makes it a net carb of zero, but I still count it as partial. So I'd probably say two and a half grams of carbs really that would actually count. So that's cool. Kind of seems like a random thing, but it will be effective. Well, that's kind of cool if you're on, a, uh, on the run. Actually, that's really cool. I mean, they're making some serious money on this. <laughs> $10 for six little pouches of rice cauliflower, which quite frankly is like dirt cheap to make. <laughs> so it's kind of cool that it's on the go and it's already cooked and stuff, but I just don't know if I can justify the cost of that. So again, all depends on what your budget is. This, is. this would be a cool item. I just don't think that it fits into a budget spending 10 bucks on that. Okay, tuna. This is a good price on tuna. And the cool thing is, what I love about Costco is they have the chunk light options. Chunk light, I've talked about in my other videos, actually better than albacore. People think albacore is the higher quality stuff. It's higher quality in the sense that it's more dense, okay? It's more dense, it has a little bit more protein. But the chunk light is a smaller fish, so it ends up being a little bit better when it comes down to how it's affecting your body from a mercury standpoint, from a toxin standpoint, and what your liver actually has to process. So I'll go ahead and grab that, because that could actually be some really good, solid protein for the week. Haha, <laughs> now we are talking. See, this is where they get the cool stuff. Okay, so. Perfect. Now, unfortunately, the sardines they have here are in olive oil. I'm not anti-olive oil. In fact, olive oil is great. Okay, good quality fat. Okay, really good profile in it. It's just going to be a little bit more fragile in the sense you can't cook with it. The reason I usually go for sardines in water is because you can control the fat content a little bit more. If you pick a sardine out of the oil, you don't know how many, how many ounces of oil are actually coming into your body when you eat a can of these versus if water, you can just control it. The fat is purely coming from the fish, but this is a good price on this and these are good quality ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab them. Uh, it is important to get the bone in um, if you can. These are boneless. So normally I want skin on and bone on, but Costco were a little bit limited. A lot of the vitamin D, a lot of the nutrients are in the skin and in the bone. So eat the whole thing. But in this case, I'll live with it. Um, Pink salmon, wild Alaskan pink salmon. So people always have issues with canned salmon. Um, I don't. Honestly, canned salmon is great because believe it or not, it's wild caught. So in this case, wild Alaskan pink salmon. It ends up making it so we don't have to go and get the farm raised stuff. Okay, we can actually get the good quality stuff. Um, 14 bucks for canned salmon. I'm not, I'm not gonna get this simply because I've already gotten canned fish here with the tuna and I've already gotten canned fish with the, uh, with the sardines and I just don't wanna blow my budget on canned goods. But still, not a bad item there. Rice, probably not gonna work. Here's the albacore. Let's go ahead and skip that. Guys, this stuff, I frankly think is junk. This is like, yeah, water seasoning, modified food starch, sodium phosphates. It's more filler than it is meat. And I've seen a lot of people use that product before and I'm like, eh, kind of a cringe. It's like, hey Dells. Right. Okay, so here's a perfect example of something that's sneaky. People will be like, sun-dried tomatoes, I can put that into my spaghetti squash or whatever and make it, okay, here's something that's kind of interesting. 70 calories because it's drenched in oil, but more importantly, 52 servings per container. You know how easy it is to eat 150 second of this? <laughs> okay, pretty easy, and that's gonna be immediately six grams of carbs. Okay, so just don't wanna be careful there. So I'm gonna go ahead and skip that. Um, I mentioned that because a lot of people talk about them. Now, artichoke hearts. Again, I wish they were made in oil, but these are pretty cool. So the cool thing about artichokes, one of the most powerful prebiotic fibers that you can get. Seriously, these grow good bacteria in your gut probably more powerfully than asparagus or, um, excuse me, asparagus, I said asparagus, asparagus or um, 
it's better to take a prebiotic food into your system than it is to take a probiotic supplement. So I'm gonna actually get some of these because I actually need them and this works perfect. I'm just going to drain them whenever I eat them. So I'm rinse them off. Marinara is tricky too, because even if you get one that doesn't have sugar, the tomatoes themselves have a bunch. That's actually not too bad. I just, I gotta watch the budget. Maybe I'll come back to this. It's just, it's not a necessity. And that's the hard part with Costco. You're gonna spend a lot of money because you're buying for a long period of time. Um, I could grab this. I mean, I definitely could use it in the future. Does this have sugar added to it? Let me see. Tomato, sea salt, and garlic. See, that's cool. All organic, nothing out. I am gonna get this. It's gonna last me, honestly, probably a month. Because what I usually do is I'll take like ground chicken, or I'll take ground turkey or ground beef, and I'll cook it up. And I will just add a little bit of that to it and make like a bolognese and then add it to spaghetti squash, stuff like that. It makes it super simple, makes it feel like I'm getting some you know, good tasty meal in without having to spend a bunch of money. So even though I just spent 11.39 on that, I think it's gonna help me out in the long run. <laughs> I almost fell into this trap. Seaweed snacks, I was like, oh cool, seaweed chips. And then, okay, found they still have a bunch of carbs in them. So basically we've got glutinous rice as the first ingredient. So if that doesn't tell you enough. <laughs> Same kind of thing with the seaweed crunch. Okay, this is seaweed crunch with almonds. Actually, this one's good. Take that back. Okay, so this one's a little bit tricky. So this is seaweed crunch with almonds. At first, it doesn't look too bad. It's only one gram, right? One gram of carbs, but 36 servings in the container. You have to be on the lookout, stuff like that. Okay, that's where things get uh, troublesome. Okay, so here we have some iodine options, right? So iodine is critical for the thyroid. Okay, so the thyroid takes tyrosine and it combines it with iodine to create T1, T2, T3, T4 to ultimately create your active thyroid hormones, which regulate your metabolism, your body temperature, very, very important for you if you're trying to lose weight. Um, seaweed is probably one of the best natural sources of iodine. Now here I have an option to get seaweed snacks or seaweed flakes. I'm gonna get seaweed flakes because I can just throw this on anything. So if I'm having some tuna, throw them on there, get my iodine. If I'm having my bolognese, throw them on, get myself some iodine. It's a great way to do it without adjusting the flavor a whole lot and not having to just munch on seaweed all the time. Okay, so avocado oil cooking spray. It's kind of cool they have this. Um, if you wanna spend the money on this, this is good stuff. The nice thing about avocado oil is a very high smoke point. So it's not gonna denature, it's not gonna go through what's called lipid peroxidation when you're cooking with it. So that means that you just end up with a, um, you don't have oxidative stress that's occurring in the body because you used a low quality oil. Canola oil, just get rid of that altogether. I'm not gonna get this because I usually cook with straight up oil. I usually use coconut oil or avocado oil in its whole form. So if you wanna get the spray because it makes life a little bit easier, then they have it as an option. Cannot live without this stuff. And that actually is a banging deal, $6.99 for three of these. I know it's not Bragg's and I love those guys, but you're not in Costco, so it's not gonna work today. Apple cider vinegar, the acetic acid does so much in the world of keto. So basically acetic acid has been shown to drop your blood sugar, which when you're looking at what's called your glucose ketone index, which is the ratio between your ketone levels and your glucose levels, you want a low GKI. You want low glucose, higher ketones. This is gonna bring your glucose down. That's why I sip on it throughout the day and I definitely sip on it in the morning when my glucose generally goes higher because of the dawn phenomenon and cortisol awakening response. First thing in the morning, cortisol goes up, blood sugar goes up, bring it down with some apple cider vinegar. That'll last me probably three months. Olive oil, I like olive oil, but I'm not gonna spend money on it right now because that's a lot of it. Um, ooh, heck yes. So this, my friends, is going to last you a long time. So even though we're spending, looks like 10 bucks if I can read backwards. Yeah, oh, it's with oh, the, yeah, yeah, 10 bucks. That's really not a bad price considering this is gonna last me, honestly, probably a year. We've had one, how long have we had one at the office? Probably six weeks. <laughs> so like two years. <laughs> oh, sweet, okay. So monk fruit, that's a super good price on this stuff. Okay, so here's the thing. Let me give you a quick breakdown on our artificial sweeteners. Splenda very much so in moderation, okay? But the first thing you have to look at with Splenda is that Splenda 
this is going to have maltodextrin added into it. So dextrose, maltodextrin, and then sucralose. So for every one packet of this, you're getting a big insulin spike from dextrose and maltodextrin. That's the biggest issue I have with Splenda. Plus, there are some studies that show that it harms your gut bacteria. Okay, then we've got Trubia, which is going to be Stevia. But this is Stevia mixed with erythritol. So we got erythritol, Stevia leaf extract, natural flavors. Nothing wrong with erythritol. But if you're going to go for something that has erythritol in it anyway, you might as well go for erythritol with monk fruit. Because monk fruit has additional health properties, whereas Stevia, there's some antibacterial components. And it's not bad by any means. I love my Stevia. But if I have an option to get monk fruit, definitely going to go for that. Plus, look at the price difference. 0.45 cents per ounce versus, or 0.45, 45 cents, 31 I mean, that's a no-brainer, so a lot cheaper. But here's the thing. So this is erythritol and monk fruit extract. Monk fruit is much better for you. In terms of what it's going to do for overall blood sugar, what it's going to do for your overall health, I would take between these, this one. Um, I talk about Lakanto all the time, so this is pretty cool. So they're not probably at all Costco's because I haven't seen them at my uh, other Costco close by, but definitely going to get some of that. So check them out if you have a Costco nearby. Ooh, okay. Uh, man, it's 10 bucks. Tommy loves these things. My baby absolutely loves them. I might grab him just because he loves them so much. So, okay, maybe it's an extra thing that we shouldn't necessarily have in here. But you can scratch it off my list if you want to. I'm going to get them because my kiddo loves them. My kiddo eats pretty close to keto. So um, I know they're not, uh, not organic, so maybe not the best thing. But you also have to live life, right? You can't totally live within a box. Okay, so here's the thing. So nuts. If you get them in the raw form, sometimes they're harder to break down. If you get them in a roasted form, sometimes it breaks down the phytates. It makes them a little bit easier. But in this case, I like pecans and I like walnuts. High omega-3, probably one of the higher fat nuts that you're going to find. Um, so sure, we can get some pecans here. But they do have... Oh, given this option, I can go for... Or I can go for organic walnuts for $12.99 or I can go for non-organic pecans for $12.99. I'm gonna go organic when I have this option, right? Definitely makes more sense for me. And I know this is price per ounce a little bit cheaper, but when I'm looking at bang for the buck, what I'm gonna get today, higher omega-3 content with this. Granted, it's important to note the omega-3 content from a plant source like this is going to be more so in the way of alpha linoleic acid, which your body has to convert into linoleic acid, which doesn't, you have a pretty low conversion rate to actual active form of omega-3, but still. Um, it's a lot of cacao powder. Yeah. I like cacao powder, but I'm not gonna get it here because I can get a smaller bag of it. I just, that would take me six months. That's kind of weird. This one, let's see. check that out. You ever seen this? Ooh. Ooh. It's because they're dehydrated, it's a lot of carbs. And also, I'm like, I don't like the canola oil, maltodextrin. They add all these extra things just to give it more body and sort of a preservatives. Otherwise, that would be okay. Well, mushrooms are a really good source of vitamin D. Probably one of the best natural sources of vitamin D that you can get. Now, people ask about lemon juice, it's a good time to bring it up because I talk about like, using a little bit of lemon juice with ACV in the morning. They ask, can I use a bottled lemon juice instead of fresh lemon juice? Always use fresh whenever possible, but this is preserved pretty darn well. It's only lemon juice in there. So yeah, you'd be okay with it. It's just, I don't feel like spending that. It adds up. We're not even into the unique keto stuff yet. We're just in the normal section. Let's just call it the normal section, right? And we're still finding things that are perfectly keto friendly, just hidden gems within here. Like we've got some weird things, not things you would normally think about getting. Uh, those wisps, Car Parmesan cheese crisps, those are good too. You could do those instead of the moon cheese. The, uh, the issue with those, of course, is still process, right? Yeah, I, just, I just don't want you blowing your budget on the snacks. It's dangerous to walk through the snack section first, always. All this, you know, one of the nice things about keto is this stuff doesn't even look good. Like, it doesn't even look good anymore. Like, I just have no desire for it. So, organic almond butter. They have regular almond butter here. Let's see what this one is. 
Oh, that's peanut butter. Never mind. So we're still in almond butter. So this isn't a bad price. Eleven sixty nine for let's see, forty three cents per ounce, fifty seven cents per ounce. So this is nutso, which is interesting. It's got cashews, almonds, Brazil nuts, flax, chia, hazelnuts, pumpkin, and sea salt. Um, so 180 calories per two tablespoons, 210 calories per two tablespoons. We have, I believe, more fiber in this. Three grams of fiber versus two grams of fiber. We have eight grams of carbs versus seven grams of carbs. Honestly, I'd probably be inclined to go with this just because it's higher quality and we get the chia, we get the flax. So we get the soluble fiber that's gonna actually allow us to be satiated more. Plus we're not getting pure phytic acid. The pure phytate's coming out. This will chelate excess minerals in the body. So what that means, or it's not just excess, all minerals. So if you overdo it on the almond butter, you don't absorb as many minerals in your body. Whereas at least if you balance it out with some of these flax seeds and chia seeds, you get by with less. So I'm gonna go with that even though it's expensive. Um, it'll last me a while. I try not to have more than like a tablespoon or two a day anyway. That's a no-go, but it looks awesome. Ooh, this is kind of cool. Check this out. Cold brew. It's probably got sugar in it. Actually, no. This is, let's see, this what, 12 in there, so it's a little over a dollar a pop. It's a lot cheaper than what you get at Costco. So I might grab some of these. I mean, it's not going to last me a whole lot of time, but hmm. Yeah, honestly, if you're on a budget, probably shouldn't do that. But this is kind of convenient. I mean, a little over a dollar a piece for just a, a cold brew, you're going to spend four dollars, three dollars if you go to um, if you go to Starbucks to get that. So I'm going to pass on that. Mm. Yeah, coffee. I'll probably just get in the regular store. It's all depends on what you're doing here. Let's see. I'm right. Ooh, avocados. Seven ninety nine for five big avocados. It's actually a good price. Um, it doesn't seem like it's a good price, but honestly, for this size avocado, yeah, this is perfect. I can cut one of these open, probably have it for two or three days, and we'll be good. Hmm. Now, mind you, we're doing clean keto, so I don't necessarily want to have like low quality cheese just as a staple in my house. Let's see what they've got here. Um, vitamin water zero, you'd be good to go on keto with that if you wanted it. Let's see, we got organic, string cheese. I think we've had enough in the way of snack stuff. I want to try to get some higher quality cooking stuff. That's a lot of heavy cream. All right, so here's my dilemma. I always go for heavy cream instead of half and half because half and half, I talk about this in all my videos, right? you have the milk sugars coming in and definitely end up getting some more of the beta caseinates, the BCM7 that you would get in half and half that you wouldn't get in heavy cream just because it has more of the actual milk versus just the milk fat. Um, the hard part is that's a big thing of heavy cream and I don't think that I'd go through all that. So I think, yeah, honestly, I'd say something like that, you're probably better off to just get at a smaller grocery store. It just doesn't make sense. It'll go bad before you use it, unless you have a big family, right? You're feeding a bunch of people. Um, this is a given. Love my Kerrygold. Grass fed, grass finished. Let's see what else we got here. Yeah, the Farmer John ones, pretty low quality stuff. I'm not gonna go for that. Uh, Kielbasa sausage, let's see. Pork beef one. Corn syrup, dextrose. Nah, that's the hard part, unfortunately. The frozen food section is, is tough. You really have to find the right kind of stuff. You know, a lot of people will say, go ahead and get the beef hot dogs to be fine. I just don't know if I want the processed stuff in my body, to be honest. So I'm trying to give you the clean options whenever I can. This whole aisle might be a little bit tough. I don't see any real good quality clean bacon here. They do have the fully cooked bacon, that's kind of cool. Um, the nice thing about that is you can just kind of bring it on the go. But let's go ahead and let's get some, I'll actually see how much is in here. That's actually pretty darn good. Let's see what's in it though. Water, salt, sugar, sodium phosphates, oh man. Let's see. Probably more preservatives because it's already cooked. Let's compare that to, okay. Still, still a bunch of stuff you can barely pronounce, right? Sodium. Erythrobate. I'm just gonna try to find the one that has the least amount of processed stuff. 
pork, water, salt, sugar, natural maple flavor. So, all right, might be, uh, might not have a choice here. Well, if I'm gonna be spending the money, I might as well get a cheaper one because it's all got the same garbage in it. I'm kind of inclined to get actually the pre-cooked stuff in this case. Okay. So why am I going for the pre-cooked? Because they all have preservatives. They're all equally bad, to be completely honest. I might as well have some convenience if I'm going to just have this stuff anyway. You might want to have that just for cooking, but honestly, this is kind of cool because you can make a BLT on uh, like a lettuce wrap, things like that, which again, like my wife loves BLT, so it's perfect for that. Let's go ahead and let's flip around and see what's over here. Most of this stuff's going to be a no-go. <laughs> Pizza. All right, so here's where you got to be careful, right? I see so many people fall victim to this. Cauliflower crust, holy cow, this is so great. And then first of all, what the heck is that? Second of all, 27 grams of carbs and cauliflower crust, low bush apart skim uh, cheese, that's all good. Okay, and then we've got powdered cellulose, cal oh my gosh, rice flour. Like, what the heck? Like, so we're, basically we have cauliflower, we have cheese, and then we have a bunch of rice flour. So not only does that have a bunch of carbs in it, but you're also spiking your insulin with the carbs in conjunction with a bunch of fats, which is just a recipe for disaster. When you combine high amounts of fats and high amounts of carbs like that, you're going into storage like immediately. So that's just a recipe for disaster. For someone that's trying to be healthier, it actually could be way more dangerous. Okay, let's see what we got here. Lenti. I wouldn't recommend going for this, but let's see, if you've got kiddos and you're trying to get them reduced fat cheddar, you know what? Honestly, if it wasn't for a bunch of soybean oil and food starch, I actually would probably say this is okay. Like, they had to do the soybean oil, and we already probably have a high amount of soy from the eggs that's in this. I just don't think it's a go, but it would be something to have really convenient. Now we're talking. This is the kind of stuff that I get. This is the kind of stuff. They have four easy microwavable bags. So you steam it in the bag and you get cauliflower rice. Money, 650. I've talked about this in a lot of my grocery haul videos, but frozen veggies are the way to go. Like honestly, they're flash frozen when they're picked, so they preserve a lot more of the nutrients, less oxidation. You buy a bunch of fresh veggies, they oxidize, you lose a lot of the antioxidant effects just right then and there because your body's busy combating the oxidative damage that occurs from that stuff. Um, the Normandy blend, stuff like that, that's got a lot of carbs in it, just because uh, I'm just gonna go for some broccoli. Again, I think we've got, ah, contains four one pound bags. Again, steam in bag. Let's go back down this way. It's kind of cool. That would blow the budget for sure, but some good quality stuff. Shellfish is one of the highest quality proteins that you can get. Really abundant amino acid profile. So if you can afford that, go for it. I'm gonna keep the budget down. Um, so the cool thing is, I like to go, when it comes to shrimp, you're gonna spend about the same amount of money to get, literally the exact same amount almost, 49 cents a pound, 49 cents per pound, to get cooked tail on versus raw tail on. So you get more pound for pound by getting it cooked in this case because it's already had the water kind of cooked out of it. So I'm gonna probably go for that. It's a quick way to get some, get some protein in. Again, put it with a little bit of spaghetti squash. Mahi mahi, good stuff. Ooh, wild Alaskan halibut. It's real easy to blow your budget in the frozen food section when they've got good fresh stuff here, but still just want to share things with you. Uh, the farmed Atlantic salmon, avoid. The wild Alaskan halibut, if again, you want to spend 35 bucks, 36 bucks, you're good to go. Tilapia, avoid. Wild cut mahi-mahi, high mercury content. So out of all of these, the winner would be halibut for sure, okay? I'm not gonna get it because it's expensive and I'll keep the budget a little bit check. Um, Chilean sea bass, also good, but again, very expensive. 
Uh, Orange Ruffy, be careful with it, even though it is wild caught. Pacific Cod is okay, it's just super lean. Um, flounder, also very lean. Fish sticks, not gonna go. <laughs> okay, now we're getting into a little bit more processed stuff. Stuff that's kind of already um, marinated and stuff like that. So we've got salmon burgers. Again, I'm not gonna spend the money here. I can get some fresh stuff. Stuff, probably not gonna work. Grilled chicken patties, same kind of thing. Let's see what's in here. Wow. Holy cow, not bad. Chicken without raised without antibiotics. Okay, that's what you want to pay attention to. Antibiotic free is different from raised without antibiotics. Okay, that means that it doesn't have antibiotics added ever. Organic onion, organic sugar, which kind of sucks. Sea salt, organic spice. That's, you know, aside from a little bit of sugar that they put in there, these are good. If you've got kiddos, like, oh, it's only salt price. That's not that great. Um, this would be just a good convenient option fully cooked though you know what honestly that's good to just have laying around i'm gonna grab some of those yeah. so these things are cool but what the heck a mystery flavor that's kind of weird uh, these usually have a bunch of uh, sucralose in them yeah we'll skip that uh, sparkling water is good to go when you're fasting so like perrier anything like that pellegrino go for that when you're fasting it helps you uh get through the day yeah kombucha will trick you six grams of carbs but there's two servings in each bottle so 12 grams of carbs that's you know half of your daily allotment of carbs right there uh, that's the one with the sugar Again, you gotta be careful. You gotta find the ones unsweetened. That one's traditional, which means it has sugar in it. I've made that mistake many times. Um, organic pasture is nice. Not a bad price. I can insert my whole spiel on eggs here, but I'm gonna save you the details. Uh, the egg whites. Honestly, the egg whites are the most inflammatory part. You want the egg yolks, so don't bother getting the cartons of egg whites. So you notice I skipped the lower quality cheeses down the aisles. Go for the higher quality stuff. Um, what we got here? That's, always try to go organic cheese whenever you can. I didn't know Kerrygold made cheese. You learn something new every day. Uh, I don't know if it means it's grass fed. Pasture, no. Product of Ireland. I don't know, but I don't want that particular kind of cheese. Okay, so feta, you can get away with not having organic, especially if it's sheep's feta. So usually it's a toss-up. Sometimes feta is sheep feta, sometimes it's not. I love feta um, just because it's usually the right kind of casein protein. It's usually A2, not A1, which means that your body's gonna process it better, not gonna have that addictive quality to it. Um, so I will go ahead and get that. That is a that is a really good deal on goat cheese. Okay, so again, goat cheese we can get by without getting organic. Uh, again, because goat milk doesn't have the same caseins that are damaging to the body as regular dairy does. So I love my goat cheese. Here's some slices. At least it's organic here. So point is, is go to the cheese section. Don't get the cheese that's in the traditional dairy aisle and processed aisle you're gonna find better choices here. Yeah, I'm gonna actually sup get this instead of the feta. The produce, remember on keto, you can have berries, just a small amount of them. I would recommend going for blueberries if you are gonna get them. I'm not gonna bother right now because that will go bad by the time I would eat them. Because I only have maybe, I don't know, quarter cup at the most per day. If I wasn't trying to watch the budget a little bit i'd probably grab some of the wild alaskan uh the smoked sake there is pretty cool it's not a bad price but like honestly we're getting enough meat we don't really need to get that so this is kind of cool if you're on the go okay simple hard-boiled eggs um a little bit pricey you know we get how many 16 two packs so we got 32 eggs for 10 bucks i think i'm just gonna get i'm good that's just good if you're on the go. 
not saying don't get them. I'm just not getting them on this trip. Be careful of all this stuff. These are awesome. I'm glad they have them here. I actually need to get more of these. So zero net carbs. So look at this stuff. Okay, we're talking cage-free egg whites, uh, whole egg, which is what I appreciate about them, air-dried cauliflower powder, non-GMO canola oil, which again, still has canola, but at least it's non-GMO. Okay, um, xanthan gum. That's the only kind of preservative they've gotten it. These things are great. So like make a little egg wrap with them or something like that, where cook up a little bit of egg and then wrap it up in those. Like they're awesome. See, if there's one little gem that you got out of this or two little gems, I should say it's Lakanto and this stuff It's pretty awesome. Again, lots of snacks. I'm going to just, I sound like a broken record. It's just so easy to fall victim to buying tons of snacks here. So I've, made a couple of mistakes here. Let's see if they have the one that I can point out. Um, I made a big fatal mistake. I would gotten some chicken here, cooked it up, ate a bunch of it, and then I was like, why do I feel like garbage? And it turns out it had soy sauce in it that wasn't gluten-free, and I'm very sensitive to gluten. You just have to be careful. Okay, so you're looking at sauces and stuff. So you wonder like, I'm eating clean, I'm eating clean. And then you just you know, just put a little bit of sauce on something. Why am I holding so much water? Why do I feel so inflamed? Why do I feel... Well, it's because that little bit of sauce, a lot of times has that in it. That is so overwhelming for your body to try to process. Like for your body to just take all that stuff in, it has to do so many different things. So uh, just be careful. If you see a bunch of ingredients like that. So this is, this might be a better option for me to get than the avocados, to be honest. If I'm just looking for the quality out of the avocado, I might just get some of this because we got house avocados, water, dehydrated onion, distilled vinegar, salt, and garlic. So I'm gonna put the avocados back and I'm just gonna get this uh, because this will last me a lot longer and then I can have it laying around. Yeah, no, this stuff's kind of cool. My kiddo likes these. I like that they actually have grass-fed little sausage links and stuff like that. Junior Frankfurters. I might grab some of these. Uh, again, see, here I go. I'm even falling victim. The stuff that's tasty, getting a lot of the snack foods, things like that. It's so easy to do. Let's go get some wholesome foods. Now you see exactly why I said start with the quality meats first. Steaks, obviously, it's a given. Here's the organic ground beef. Some, uh, I guess they don't have the bison here. Here's the reason I go for the beef, um, the ground beef. It's easier to just to break down. It's already partially digested. For me, steaks, I just have a hard time breaking them down. I just don't chew my food very well. So not a bad deal for this. $4.99 a pound for organic beef. Sockeye versus wild caught, or sorry, wild caught sockeye versus farm raised. Um, $9.99 a pound. Honestly, that's a good price but we're talking like a dollar a pound cheaper. I could get the frozen salmon. That is essentially the same thing, just frozen. So I just don't know if I want to get this this week. But again, just so you know, you want to go for the wild sockeye. If it's this color, look at the difference in color here. All right, that's just what you got to know. That's all you got to know. Okay, big difference in color there halibut okay so remember that big old bag of halibut i showed you those 35 bucks compare that to fresh being 19 bucks yeah i mean it's you do the math like if you don't really care i wish they had the bison here okay so when it comes to the white meat chicken you want to go for the leaner cuts okay with chicken the fatty acid profile is not as good so go leaner okay with beef the fatty acid profile is better so you're okay to have beef that's fattier but with the chicken and the poultry go leaner. That way you are not getting the nasty, poor quality fats that are usually in poultry. Higher soy levels, higher omega-6, just naturally. Um, this isn't a bad price on this. I'll go ahead and grab this. Um, let's see, that's $4.99 a pound for good quality organic chicken. This one feels a little weird. There we go. There go. I did see one other thing over here that was kind of cool. Um, it's the rotisserie chicken meat. Nope. <laughs> Here's why. Do not get this. I almost bought into this. Carrageenan. Okay, one of the most inflammatory things known to man. Why do they still put that in stuff? It's to give it texture. 
frustrates me. That's a bummer. That would have been a great thing. It's just like rotisserie that's been pulled right off. So easy to eat. And then they had to put... Carrageenan is used in research and clinical settings to literally in, instigate inflammation. So they use it to start inflammation in the body so that they can measure things that reduce it. So if in a clinical setting they needed to cause inflammation to test ibuprofen, they would give them a bunch of carrageenan because they know it causes inflammation. <laughs> so, all right, Ooh, look at that. That's a good price per pound. So if you know how to really prepare some fish, that's the way to go. Okay, now a lot of times they'll have some stuff up at the front that might be the way to go. One thing I did not feel like I accomplished on this trip is good quality fats. Um, I got a lot of different protein options, but not a whole lot of fat options. So, but again, okay, we're making do with what we got, right? Like once you have your home stocked, it's a lot easier. Like right now, it's, it's as if we're building from baseline really tough because I'm like, once I have a pantry stocked full of avocado oil and coconut oils and stuff like that, I have endless supplies of healthy fats. But right now, if my fridge and my house were just to be stocked with this kind of stuff, I feel like I would be deprived of some of the fats that I would normally get. Okay, so here's the stuff up front. Look at, here's where all the, the other nuts are. Let's take a look at this. Okay, mixed nuts, not gonna go for that. Uh, too much cashews. Look at the carb content here. Should be about nine probably, eight. Um, not terrible but very inflammatory compared to other nuts. Oh, I wish. Pistachios are high in fiber, but also one of the highest carb nuts. So we're gonna pass on those. If you are gonna get pistachios, get them with the shell on. At least you have a barrier to entry, so it slows you down a little bit. It's a little trick that Amber came up with because she loves her pistachios and she was getting them like that and she was finding, oh my gosh, I just ate like 400 calories worth of pistachios. But if you go like this, it slows you down quite a bit, so. There we go. That's what I'm talking about. Macadamia nuts. They are not cheap, but that is definitely cheaper than what you would pay elsewhere. So Trader Joe's for a bag about half this size is $10.99. So although it looks expensive, this is not bad. Um, because I found those, I'm gonna probably, I'm gonna put these back. Um, save some money here. All right, just so you know, guys, these are not keto friendly, okay? These bulletproof bars, uh, cashew butter. So already have, I mean, that's just a lot of carbs. Okay, 14 grams, I don't care who you are, that's a lot of carbs. So love Dave Asprey, but I don't think those are gonna work. Okay, here's a good chance to talk about some, some proteins here. Let's see what they got. Whey protein concentrate blend. If you're gonna pick a protein powder here, go for this. But honestly, like with so many inexpensive online options, like, oh, these are cool, these nut butters. Um, I just feel like they're still, they put d uh, dates in there to try to get some, wow. Okay, yeah, that one's not gonna work. Oh, these are bars, Never mind. I thought they were the nut butters. Let me scrap that all together. <laughs> I'm definitely gonna be a fan of plant-based protein powder instead of whey in this particular case. Everyone jumping on the keto bandwagon. All right, I think I got some keto basics here. I mean, like I said, this isn't a full-scale grocery haul because I'm feeding myself, my wife, and my kiddo, and I don't want things to go bad. That's the difficult thing with Costco. If you're feeding a family, you could make this work, but here we have different options. This is different things that you would normally see on someone's typical keto shopping list, right? You don't see a bunch of cheeses. You don't see a bunch of low quality fats. You see healthy quality, leaner proteins and good healthy fats coming into the equation. Now, I don't know what the price is going to be. A lot more than I want to spend. Let's see. This is hurting. Okay. <laughs> Think I'm under two? All right. Wouldn't be bad. The Costco grocery haul under 200. I'm going to say 206. 206.50. Oh! <laughs> All 
All right, it's a good thing that I'm eating this stuff because otherwise... <laughs> All right, so if you want to know the honest truth, if you watched my Aldi grocery haul and my Walmart grocery haul, I think you can get in and out <laughs> in a much better budget at those stores than you can in Costco. Even though I got a higher volume of food and a lot more stuff, it's definitely proving to be more cost effective because I don't know, like I don't, this is probably gonna last me three weeks a month with my family, um, but I'm still gonna have to go to the store to get more proteins and more things like that because I didn't wanna buy a bunch of meat and have it sit in the fridge. Uh, I could have gotten a bunch of frozen stuff, but either way, it's cool to show you the keto options that are there and what to choose. So if you do shop at Costco, at least pick some of these things up. I mean, at the very least, it's a helpful tip. What's up, man? Right on. Thanks, bud. End our day with a hot dog. Or should I say, start our day with a hot dog and end our day on the toilet? <laughs> so, just a, just a hair under 300 bucks. I guess when you look at it from the sense that this will last me longer than a week, it might have been on par with the Aldi grocery haul or the Walmart grocery haul. But the point is, is that Costco has some really good options. I mean, I found some things that I really can't find at a lot of grocery stores. So, I mean, I got, honestly, I got the Lakanto, which I usually can't get. I got good quality meat, which I can get a lot of places. Um, good deal in the coconut oil. A lot of just on the go snack type things, which makes life a lot easier. So I think the general consensus is do like a once a month trip to Costco for all your like snack items and things like that, because they have a lot of non-perishable things that will sit in your pantry for a while that you could get away with having there for a while. And then go bi-weekly or every week and get your meats and things like that from the other stores where it's a little bit cheaper. So it just makes sense. So like do a once a month Costco haul for all the stuff that can sit in the pantry. You just gotta get a little bit strategic if you wanna save some money on keto. So let's load this stuff up and eat up. All right, so that was a successful trip. I will say, once again, I, I feel like I accomplish more at other grocery stores. I feel like I spend less. Costco, you just somehow, I mean, who else here is with me? Like, it's like you can't go to Costco without spending at least a couple hundred bucks, like no matter what. So you always kind of walk out of there feeling like a little bit defeated. It's like, I feel, oh man, like 300 bucks. And then I look as I'm loading it in the car and I'm like, man, do I really get all that much stuff? I always say that Costco leaves you with needing filler material. You get things that are random and then you get a bunch of them and then you have to go to other stores to get filler material. So it's not always the most time efficient or time effective way to get your grocery shopping done. However, we still find ourselves going to Costco semi-frequently just because they have interesting items that I can't get elsewhere. But this day and age, the ability to get things online, I don't know. It's, it's like, do you need to get massive amounts of this stuff when you can just go on Amazon and get it delivered to your door? Like, Lakanto, it's awesome to see them in a Costco because I just appreciate them and I know them very well and it's nice that they're, they're winning big and getting it in Costco. Like, that's a good sign of the times, right? But you can also just get it online you know, but if you're shopping at Costco and you see that, it's just great to see that people are able to become aware of healthier options. And that's the big reason I wanted to do this Costco grocery haul. But also just to show you, you can still get clean things at Costco and you can get semi-processed clean things at Costco. So I'll say it one more time, Costco is a great way to stock up your pantry with the non-perishables and then go to the other grocery stores, the specialty grocery stores and get your perishables. You have to make two trips technically, but I think you're gonna end up better off that way. If you have a grocery store that you want to see me do a video on, put it down below in the comment section. So maybe it's Kroger, maybe it's Ralph's, something like that. I love to do these as long as I'm not getting kicked out. Um, I'm down to fly to a specific area if it's a grocery store that we don't have in California. So anyhow, thank you all very much for watching. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you in the next video.